There have been a few interesting illustrations uh, over the years in literature and art and philosophy of various kinds. Um, trying to show, trying to portray the moment of realization, the moment where the truth of it all dawns on the human being, um, that we live in what is best described, I guess colloquially described, as a hard deterministic universe. What's the reaction when somebody discovers this, when somebody finds out beyond any possible doubt that this is the case. I'm not trying to say that this is the case, but just imagine what it would be like to know this beyond any shadow of a doubt. Uh, it's interesting because the versions that I've seen are sort of divided. Um, say Nietzsche's eternal return, which isn't really deterministic, but it kind of is, um, seems to be spun as a positive thought experiment, amor fati, the love of fate, coming to terms with and loving the fact that everything is just going to keep repeating itself over and over again ad infinitum. Um, the myth, myth of Sisyphus, same deal by Camus, he says, uh, we have to conclude ultimately that Sisyphus is happy rolling this rock up the mountain and having it just push back down where he has to go back and get it again. Um, and having said that, at the beginning though, uh, when Nietzsche and Camus first illustrate um, these two thought experiments, they allow for the fact that your initial reaction is almost certainly going to be horror. Now that's interesting. You would think if we lived in a completely deterministic universe and you suddenly discovered that it was deterministic and there's no point in being horrified by anything, you wouldn't be horrified. It's just there's nothing to be afraid of. It's just that's the way the universe is. Um, you haven't discovered anything positive or negative. Um, there can be no positive or negative in this situation. You have simply seen things for the way they are. Um, now, the interesting thing, of course, is that we do feel shocked and terrified, or some people do. Uh, some people apparently aren't. Like, for example, my father is of the temperament that if I, you know, if I gave him this proof, he might just sort of go, oh, that's interesting. I'm sure maybe you've met people that are like that. They're not horrified by that. But we can imagine being horrified by it. We can imagine us having some kind of desire not to um, be subjected to this kind of what looks to us fate. <clears throat> Something that's beyond our control. Um, I always refer to the opening chapter of the Bhagavad Gita where Arjuna looks at essentially that he arrives at that moment of realization that he's not in control of anything and he never was to begin with. And he falls uh, falls down um, you know, sort of into a fetal ball and sort of can't handle it. It's just too insane. He's crushed in Eastern terminology by the wheel of existence. By the fact that things are just going to keep happening. Now, in Arjuna's case, there's a fascinating ingredient. Guilt. Arjuna looks out at the battlefield and he says, I have to, I'm in a situation now where I can't avoid harming other people. This is crazy. 
I got an endless series of doors in front of me. All of them apparently lead to hell. <laughs> All of them lead to a undesired outcome. I have to kill my friends, my relatives, my teachers. This is going to be a cataclysmic war uh, that cannot possibly have a winner, a, a good outcome. Um, and it's nuts. I thought that I could actually be good or bad in this world and be an upright person. But now I'm in a situation that is simply too much for me. Um, that's, you know, again, sort of the realization, in a sense, that you might live in a universe that kind of looks like what we would call deterministic. He's driven to despair by this, utter despair. Because there's guilt involved in his case. Rather than simply seeing the universe as something that is, Arjuna can see in his mind, can envision the universe perhaps as it should be. <coughs> um, and this creates guilt. He sees an ideal universe where everybody is just, or at least in which the just never end up in circumstances like this, in horrifying circumstances like this. And he sees the universe that he does live in doesn't resemble that at all. Now, of course, we know what happens. Uh, Krishna, God, uh, who in many ways, if you ask me, can be seen as just a plot device, you don't even have to believe in God to get anything out of this. Um, explains to him that there's no guilt in any of this. This is just the way things are happening. But since the interesting thing, though, Arjuna, is you have felt shock, horror, and despair at this. That means you have placed value on it. The universe just is. So, I've mentioned that there are probably people out there that would just go, oh, the universe is deterministic or we're in the wheel of existence and things will just recur eternally. And, <laughs> I'm supposed to get affected by this how? Um, Whereas the assumption in all three of these cases, Nietzsche, Camus, and uh, the Gita, is that when the moment of realization washes over us, we're horrified. We, my God, we're trapped. And it's just going to keep going forever? So horror is a reaction, or some sort of negative value state is a reaction. In other words, there is at least an evaluation that takes place. <clears throat> a lot of people who express determin determinism tend to do so in a negative sort of way. I won't say everybody does, but some people just say, well, it just it's neither good nor bad, it just is. Whereas other people can say, it is horrifying. Now, I think that that's unarguable, that some people look at a deterministic universe and are horrified by it, believe that they're trapped in it. Especially, say, something like eternal recurrence, where there's no way out of this. There's no way out of your own life. Um, but, of course, all three stories are ultimately positive. But the assumption being, of course, you first have to see, you have to get over the initial horror of it all. Otherwise, you simply ball up and exist in a state of paralysis forever. <laughs> um, but they do say that there is some way of learning to love this and learning to truly love it and see it as a wonderful endless thing. 
Um, a lot of them say that, or they all seem to imply that, it all depends on what direction you're looking in. If you look at a deterministic universe, you say everything happens because of a reason. Now, or everything, I shouldn't say that, everything happens because it was determined, or everything happened as a result of previous circumstances, etc. Now, when you're looking at the the uh, chronology, I guess, of that, let's say the past is behind you, the future is ahead of you, and the present is where you are right now. What direction are you looking in? Um, it's kind of a hard thing to discern or to refer to, but I use the metaphor of driving along uh, a street in a big city. Are you looking over the driver's shoulder towards the past sort of shoot off into the distance? Or are you looking straight ahead through the windshield as becoming comes at you and you are welcoming it. <laughs> um, that's something that I think has a great deal to do with the evaluation uh, or the value that we place on uh, what may be, although again I don't know, what may be something awfully similar to a deterministic universe. What direction are we looking in? When you're looking into the past, or when you're looking into rather what has happened, recede into the distance behind you, you're looking at essentially a piling up of experience. A piling up of more and more things that clutter this. Um, and you're sort of looking at it in a reactive sort of way. You're seeing so many things happen, or you're seeing the evidence of so many things having happened, that your emphasis, your look is taken off the fact that things are continually happening in real time. Um, I would say that this actually makes an enormous difference as to what value you place on the way things happen. What value do you place on existence itself? <clears throat> the way of looking over one's shoulder at the number of experiences piling up behind you is, in my opinion, the one that is most likely to lead you to guilt. Um, and guilt is the, um, the ingredient in all of this that may make all of this look onerous to some people, horrifying to some people rather than looking towards something, you are looking back at something. Rather than initiative, rather than will to become, you are merely reacting to what you have apparently become. <laughs> um, it's a difficult thing to explain, but I would believe, I think that it accounts for the difference in reactions to the universe. Guilt has to do with the piling up of experiences behind you, especially negative ones. Um, and the other way, the, I don't know what you would call it, amor fati, love of fate, or... Uh, one could even say the will to power, if you want, or um, the Hindus would say liberation is looking 
forward, stepping into it. Your emphasis, your view is ahead of you. You're not just watching things pile up behind you. Because determinism, if we see it in a certain way, or if we want to call this kind of view of things determinism, which it may not be, goes in both directions. We have the future and the past, which haven't happened and have happened, and we have becoming itself, which is kind of the present, but the present is, if you ask me, an inadequate word for becoming itself. Um, the future hasn't happened yet. The past is gone. What does it mean now to... Where do we fit into this as beings? And how does our reaction to it affect our value state of being in existence? I would say that it's onerous if we look too far ahead or we look too far to the past. If you sort of exist in a state of simple becoming, um where you are conscious of things continually happening, where you are stepping into something, where you are moving forward, where you are taking initiative, where you are in control, and you don't even have to actually be in control of anything. You're simply in control of your own perceptions of it all. I would say that's when, or that is the direction under which um, one can find the non-negative value of a deterministic or of a materialistic or recurring or um, even chronological universe. Um, has to do with a lot of things and a lot of the terminology that we use is not really up to the job of illustrating what I'm referring to here, but suffice it to say, we know that it is possible to despair of this, to despair of the sudden knowledge or realization that we may live in a deterministic universe, that we may essentially be puppets. So that means that we do know that it's possible to value this, to put value on all of this. What if we take control of the value that gets put on it. <laughs> Thank you.